Welcome back. The big story today, Ontario recording two cases of the new Omicron COVID-19 variant that is spreading globally. At least 11 countries reporting infections. It originated in South Africa, deemed a variant of concern by the World Health Organization, which, by the way, uh, just this morning in a technical briefing, assessing it as very high when it comes to risk. Yeah, strong words coming from the WHO. Joining us to discuss what you need to know about this mutation is Dr. Susie Hoda, infectious disease specialist with the University Health Network, and Dr. Zane Chagla, infectious disease phys physician, excuse me, with St. Joseph's Healthcare in Hamilton. Uh, to both of you, thank you very much. And I understand, and, and it's a huge thank you because I know we don't have a ton of information yet. You are learning in real time like everyone else. So we appreciate you jumping on. Dr. Hoda, start with you. How is this variant different from Delta? Well, I think that the first thing that caught everyone's attention is the sheer number of mutations that they've noticed on this variant, and many of those mutations clustering around where that spike protein is, which is really important for a few reasons. It could be that some of these mutations will lead to more transmission of this variant, and the other real concern is could some of these mutations actually result in what we call immune evasion, which means that you could be at higher risk of reinfections, but also vaccines may not be as effective. So just looking at that mutation profile, that looks very concerning. And then the other thing that really uh, was, was concerning is what's happened in South Africa, where it's kind of taken off and, and dominated rather quickly, um, and us not really having the information yet to put that in context, why it's actually taken off like that. Is that increased transmissibility? Or are there other drivers? Uh, Dr. Chegla, I know you took to Twitter as there was this whole conversation about travel bans, the, the conversation that we are also having here on Breakfast Television, and whether or not it makes sense to impose travel bans when it comes to Omicron. What is your take on this? Yeah, look, you know, I, I, number one, I don't think this necessarily originated in South Africa. We should be very, very thankful to South Africa as they, they have the genomic technology to actually identify this quickly, to get this information for us, to give it to the world. Um, but, you know, it showed up there to be identified. It didn't necessarily originate there. Uh, and, you know, it could have been circulating in, in many Southern African or Sub-Saharan African countries for some time. This was just the canary in the coal mine. Uh, and until we know that, you know, unfortunately, you know, we are just adding names to the list. There is uh, the two cases now that we noted in Nigeria that, that showed up to Ottawa. And unfortunately, you know, when we see cases associated with travel, it usually is pretty suggestive of an underlying burden of disease in those communities. If a traveler can get it, there may be enough people there to infect the traveler. So, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're kind of playing whack-a-mole with different uh, airports, and, and it's not the most effective strategy. We're likely going to determine in the next week as, as labs turn on that there may be circulation locally. And again, maybe a policy towards enhanced testing for travelers rather than an all-out, you know, stop travel from here, but you can travel from here scenario uh, is going to be more effective. And, and we just have to be reminded, look, when COVID came to Canada, Many of us were focused on what was happening in Iran and in China about uh, the introductions of COVID to Canada. Well, if you look genomically at what happened, it was actually multiple introductions from Europe and the United States, which led to Canada's first part of the epidemic. And so that's, that's just important to keep an eye on. Uh, it may not be the countries that are identified. It may be the countries that are unidentified that are leading the cases showing up here. Dr. Hoda, the, the one thing I saw circulating a lot over the weekend, and I gotta be you got to be careful with anything circulating right now because we don't know for sure, but the feeling is, okay, this is way more transmissible. However, there is a chance that because it's moving at this type of speed, it won't land as many people in ICUs and be as vicious as some of the other strains of this we've seen. Do you agree with that, disagree with that, or do we not have enough info yet? We definitely don't have enough information at this point. Um, that is something that, um, you're right, has been circulating questions about the severity of illness. We, we truly don't know. There have been some claims that there have been milder illnesses and people who've been vaccinated, but honestly, what we need to have is the thorough epidemiologic investigations into the cases that have occurred in South Africa. Now, just from experience, going back and trying to ascertain all of that is a bit difficult when you're dealing with a larger number of cases that have happened over time. But, you know, in countries where few numbers of cases are arising, it's going to be really important in these early days here in Canada and other countries to be looking into what happens, you know, with the actual people who are infected and those that, that may get it from them, so their contacts. And I think that will help us to understand um, just what kind of impact it would have on severity of illness. Dr. Chagla here at home, two confirmed cases. 
How confident are you that we have more? Look, we the good news is, is since uh, since Alpha and, and Delta, there has been a, a large push to build up, build up genomic surveillance networks. And in Ontario, we're doing about 35% of samples for genomic surveillance, which is pretty remarkable considering how, uh, how difficult and how time consuming that is. Um, the nice thing about this variant, or the one thing that we've been given, is that the screening testing is relatively simple. It's actually some of the testing we use for the alpha variant. Uh, and so labs can quickly pivot. So, you know, we will learn, I think, this week or two, if we, we do have local transmission of this virus, we have the capacity to detect it. And there's been lots of scientists and universities that have really been contributing to making sure that, you know, if this scenario arose, we could rapidly respond and, and detect. Um, but, uh, but yeah, like, I think we will know relatively soon if we have circulation locally. Uh, and certainly, you know, at the airport level, we'll, we'll definitely know if, if enhanced, secure, en enhanced testing comes on board and, and we can easily uh, surveillance those specimens. Uh, final question for both. Yeah, any 10 second answers, please forgive me. Starting with Dr. Hoda, do I need to start to think about canceling holiday plans here? I don't think we need to start thinking about canceling anything yet. I think we need to watch it very closely day by day uh, and be prepared if things do change. I think we've been in this position before where we know we just have to be ready to, to be flexible. Um, and I think at this point, we just try to limit what contacts we have with other people and take things a little bit slowly. Dr. Chagla? Yeah, absolutely. And and the one thing I would add is just, you know, it's, it's still a time to have conversations about vaccines with people because, you know, there, there still is probably going to be some protection here. And, uh, you know, we know it is a long-term solution that's that's important, even with Delta circulating locally. Dr. Hoda, Dr. Chegla, we appreciate you taking all of this time with us this morning. Thank you so much.